again and uh, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm just going to be talking through a few of the different types of resin I've been using in my recent projects and to answer that question I put at the end of my title is uh, is resin food safe? Uh, as I said in my last video I've been doing um, a few projects recently and I've been doing quite a bit of research on a few different types of resin to come up with that answer. So I thought, I thought just for today instead of a build I'd just share a little bit of the information that I've gathered uh, over the last few weeks. Uh, firstly, as you'll know, if you saw in previous projects, uh, I, I use predominantly glass cast resin, which is um, easily available uh, in the UK from Easy Composites or GlassCast.com. Uh, um, and obviously, they have a range of different products. The Glass Cast 50, which was the first one I've done um, for making my table, um, a river uh, rubber on table is for the larger pores, or I should say for the deeper pores. I've currently got this piece of U here, which I haven't fully decided what I'm gonna do with it yet. Um, and this one is nearly 40 millimeters thick. Uh, I do also have, which is similar to the other first project I've done, a uh, piece of oak here, uh, which is around about, uh, once it's been planed, will be about 25 millimeters thick. Now, if you're thinking of doing a river table or a resin table for the first time, Think about the, the actual thickness of what you want to do because anything up to and around 25 millimeters um, you can get away with one pour uh, and anything larger than that really so like say this if I decide to make a table with it it's going to require two pours it's to do with um, the, the chemical reaction that get overheat and things so it has to be done over two pours and what that means is allowing your first pour to cure to something called the B stage um, and then pour in the, t the next layer. So you kind of just add in layers until you get to the desired thickness that you need. Now, in previous videos, and also when we're watching some um, other people on YouTube, uh, the inevitable question comes up is, how long does it take to cure? And um, how long will it take to get to the B stage? Now, <clears throat> I'd love it to be that there is a set answer that in four hours time it, uh, you can it'll be at the B stage and then you can add the second pour. It genuinely doesn't work like that with resin. And I was trying to come up with an, an analogy and the only thing I could really think of was um, if you took two ovens and you had two chickens to cook in, in a, and you cook and you put one oven at 180 degrees and one oven at 130 degrees, the chickens will cook at different times. And it's kind of like that with resin, really. It depends in the environment in which you're pouring it in. Now, in an ideal world, uh, you would have a temperature regulated garage or workshop and you can control the humidity and um, you can have a thermometer or whatever uh, for, to make to monitor your temperature. 98% uh, well, of us don't live in an ideal world. So like in my garage, it's a bit leaky in places. It's got air running through it. It was cold yesterday. It was warm the day before. It's very windy today. So there is no... Um, sort of set time it's better probably for me to do the resin pours inside the house but then it involves pouring resin in the house or actually getting permission to pour resin in the house uh, so you need to kind of uh, be mindful of these things all the B stage actually means is once you've done the pour and you're leaving it to cure if you can go back to it and put a nail, you know, like your nail press and your nail leaves an indentation or it leaves a fingerprint and then eventually goes, sort of clears off. Then it's still at the B stage and you, it's at the B stage and you can then add to the second pour. If the resin fully cures, um, what you have to do, you kind of have to score the resin so then when you pour it again, it will make the chemical bond score and it can be like using a, I think it's like an 80 grit or 120 grit sander just to sort of rough up the top and then you can do the second pour if it's fully cured. Best way to do it though is when it's at the B stage and what you basically have to do is time with, uh, make sure you time the pour correctly. It's probably best to do it in the morning and then you can keep an eye on it all day 
uh, and then make that decision or you can check with your thumb um, with the nail or with your sort of fingerprints or something to see whether you can then go on to the second pour so that's glass cast 50 um, as I say if you're thinking of doing a resin table maybe think about getting a, a thinner one so once you've planed it it can be in and around 25 mil don't have to worry about a B stage in a second pour then and experiment with it that way before moving on to something thicker now glass cast 3 which you've seen me use in my um, penny tabletop is for much thinner pours okay probably up to 3 mil uh, so you kind of just put in a coating over this uh, over the top of it this one as well it doesn't um, have to be treated after that you can pour it and providing you're happy with the finish on it it's really clear uh, you can if you want to you can then go and you can start sanding it and work through the grits and polish it up yourself but as a general rule on my penny table I um, I didn't I was happy with the finish it looked great um, so it was just kind of almost done again um, there's a difference between it kind of curing so it being solid and fully curing so when I'd done the penny table inside it, it kind of because it was nice and warm over the, those period of days it was cured if you like to touch at about uh, 24 hours it was fully cured as in rock solid uh, sort of just over 48 hours okay so if you think it's done I'd leave it a little bit longer okay just to be on the safe side particularly if you've got it somewhere we don't actually have to move it as soon as possible uh, I would leave it for as long as you can to be 100% sure it's fully cured okay now I just want to talk a little bit about the food safe aspect of resin because I say a bit I've had a, a few emails to and from Glasscast I've also doing a little bit of my own research on this topic and it was to do with my last video which I've kind of been experimenting for ideas I was talking about uh, looking at uh, making some stuff to sell at sign of craft sales and things like that and it was a an end grain um, dual use a chopping board on the wood side and to flip over and a serving platter on the resin side now my question actually what I sent to glass cast was I was unsure whether to um, treat the wood with the mineral oil on the resin side and then apply the glass cast 3 uh, before applying the Heidelberg uh, hard wax oil over the top of it um, and the answer was they actually they weren't 100% sure so I'm running a few little tests on that at the moment because what I've done with this one I applied the resin uh, and then applied the mineral oil and then coated everything in the Heidelberg uh, hard wax oil now what they did come back with um, sort of a guidance for me really was they said although glass cast 3 is fully inert think means non-toxic um, once it's fully cured it isn't certified as food safe uh, which was like okay um, but my kind of look at it was I'm actually giving it three coats of hard wax oil on top of the resin once the resins fully cured because I look at it in the terms of would we say that um, wood isn't certified as food safe it's how you treat it after it because then you know if wood you're applying mineral oil you're applying your treatments your wax oils whether it's a hard wax oil or it's one you've made yourself so this isn't the view of certainly isn't the view of glass cast and it isn't the view of Heidelberg or any um, the manufacturers of this but I was okay with it in myself that I am treating over the top of the resin with um, you know three layers I mean the wax oil if you've used this kind of thing it's um, once it cures it's uh, you know it forms a really protective seal now I know it doesn't soak into the resin like it soaks into the wood okay but it does apply a protective coat over the top now in, I'd be happy with that at home for myself but that's only my personal opinion that is not for you guys to go well this fella said on YouTube that uh, it's food safe it, I'm not saying it is glass cast is saying the resin is not certified as food safe okay I'm treating 
over the top with Heidelberg hard wax oil, which is food and toy safe, okay, which is applying a protective coat to the resin. In regards to actually marketing and selling um, something like that, maybe at a craft fair, I'm then hitting a potential, um, I'm not saying litigation, but uh, sort of, uh, is there an insurance implication in regards to selling something, marketing something as a serving platter for food where the underside of it is not certified as food safe. So, I started to do a little bit of research, okay? And I think I've come up with a good solution, which is this stuff, which is called Art Resin. Now this is actually also available uh, on the Easy Composites website. Uh, it's also av widely available uh, on Amazon. Pretty sure it's an American product, okay? And it is what I, it's called FDA, which I think, that's why I'm thinking it's the, an American product. It's certified as food safe. Now, uh, and so I'd get this right. Um, is this resin food safe? Art resin is FDA approved as food safe for incidental food contact, which in practical terms means occasional and non-continuous contact. So for example, a cheese board, serving platter, or a fruit bowl. All right, so that for me is the green light, If because uh, my sort of ideas at the moment is kind of producing dual use um, uh, uh, serving platters and chopping boards. Uh, so, Art resin, if you're thinking of doing something along those lines, um, is the safe option to do. I'm going full on belt and braces because the art resin coat is then being given a couple, two, three coats of Heidelberg hard wax oil, which is also certified as food safe. And the next video, the one working example I've got at the moment uh, is this, okay, which uh, I'm currently doing a video, it should be out hopefully in the next few days which is a Star Trek, lo Star Trek logo, um, actually glows in the dark as well, uh, with some of the pigments I've uh, added to the, uh, to the resin, which is a cheese board, and maybe for chopping on the maple side, uh, which has been, treated, so it's been treated on both sides, and for serving, maybe glow in the dark serving, um, on this side, which has been applied the layer the final layer over the top the ceiling layer is using the art resin okay uh, as I say I, I won't tell you too much about this because you'll see the build project hopefully coming up in a few days so that is my way and also as in a kind of um, maybe an insurance side of things a food safe way of using resin for projects like cheese boards serving platters I wouldn't recommend it for cutting board side because you don't really want to be using a sharp knife cutting into resin because it will spoil the effect of it. But on dual use side, if I say do chopping on one side and flip it over for the serving side of things to serve to your guests or whoever. Okay, now I hope that's been of some help. It's just not the normal kind of thing I do in terms of my channel, sort of usually a little bit more building project based. But, as I said, with me doing some kind of research and development ideas at the moment, with a view to selling and marketing stuff, hopefully in the future, I hope this has been a little bit uh, useful to some of you out there who are maybe considering doing something similar. Okay, so just um, thick cold stuff, glass cast 50, okay, maybe for two pours. If you think you're doing it for the first time, look for some kind of timber that's around about 25 mil once it's been planed. Um, applying a nice fine layer over the top for something like a penny table project, glass cast three, but remember, not certified as food safe. If you're thinking of doing a serving platter cheese board, uh, maybe a combo chopping board, cheese board, serving platter type thing, then look into this one, which is Art Resin, which is by the FDA, certified as food safe, and I would definitely consider uh, applying um, a food safe uh, hard wax oil or food safe coating over the top of it and the one I look, always reach for and you know this by now is the Heidelberg uh, hard wax oil which is H-E-A 
0.11-0001. Okay, hope that's been of some use. Take care, keep an eye out for the uh, new project coming up, hopefully in the next few days. Take care and I will see you soon. Thank you.